In the modern world, we are surrounded by squared, straight, and level edges everywhere. But in the natural world, such things are kind of rare to find. So that poses kind of a unique challenge. You might not think about day to day. If you don't have modern tools like a ruler, level, or a set square, how do you keep things from being completely lopsided? Well, let's look at and then make some of the tools the ancient Egyptians used to build the pyramids. Everything we use comes from 8,000 generations of collective innovation and discovery. But could an average person figure it all out themselves and work their way from the Stone Age to today? That's the question we're exploring. Each week, I try to take that next step forward in human history. My name is Andy, and this is How to Make Everything. Be sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss the next step in this journey. Thank you to Simply Safe for sponsoring this video. The day sponsor Simply Safe, you too can protect your worldly possessions from break-ins or grave robbers, just like the pharaohs did. Simply Safe is a comprehensive security system taking the place of all of our various security cameras, door locks, and sensors, putting them all under one service that is monitored 24/7 by Simply Safe dispatch team. You can protect your space and keep track of who comes and goes, remotely give access to guests and visitors. They have sensors that cover everything, forced entry, smoke and carbon dioxide warning, even water and free sensors. And if triggered, visual confirmation via security cams means Simply Safe calls get three and a half times faster police response than other calls. And it'll still work if you lose power, Wi-Fi, or if the system is attacked. For 50 cents per day, with no contract, Simply Safe is an easy and cost-efficient way to protect your home or studio. We're excited to start using it in our studio to keep all the haters out. To learn more, visit simplysafe.com slash how to make everything. First up, let's take a closer look at what these tools can build. The first pyramid was built around 2630 BCE, with the largest one of Giza, 2580 BCE. The Great Pyramid of Giza stood at over 481 feet when completed and remained the tallest building ever built for almost 4,000 years. Aligned to true north within one degree of accuracy, they are amazingly precise in their measurements. The four sides are equal within inches, and the base of it is level within almost half an inch. Measuring precision like that requires an accurate way to make straight lines, parallel lines, squared edges, and measuring level. So those are the challenges I'll need to overcome. The tools I have available to me right now are the hammer I previously cast, the knife, and the dagger, as well as the twine I've previously spun. To help us in fine woodworking, let's cast a few more varieties of wood chisels and a bronze saw. None of my attempts at the saws ended up working out, so I opted to turn my knife into a saw blade using a chisel. Stay sharp. So the first challenge I face is getting a straight line. In nature, things like to curve. So getting an actually straight line is a little bit of a challenge. And one solution the Egyptians used was to take a piece of string, hold it tight between two points, and that would be a perfectly straight line. And then to mark it, they would dip it in chalk, coat it in ash or colored dye, and then snap it. And it'll transfer that dye onto the surface and you have a nice little guide. So I have a little bit of Chalk from Dover, I can try crushing up, but I'm thinking black might be a little bit more effective for what I'm working with. So I'm gonna try crushing up some wood ash to make a black pigment to apply to the twine so you can snap it and get some nice black lines. Let's give that a shot. Go play with the string. Crushing it, man. So 
So now that I figured out how to make a straight line, next I wanna find a good way to measure and compare distances and make parallel lines so I can cut straight objects pretty easily. So the tool I'm gonna to make is called a marking gauge. I can't have been able to find much information on its history, so I don't know for sure if the ancient Egyptians would have used this, but it's such a simple tool, it's hard to imagine they wouldn't have. Basically, it's just a stick. That one end has a little marking spot, a part that slides back and forth and you can set to whatever distance you want. Most of them today use a screw to tighten it and lock it in place, but we haven't invented the screw yet, so we're gonna use a wedge to lock it in. So it's just gonna be three pieces, maybe the rod, the gauge, and then a wedge. So first up, we need to make a straight line using our chalk line and use that as a guide for carving up some wood, try and get some straight pieces, the gauge can slide down. Boom. For the marking needles of the gauge, I cast a small blade using wax and cob. There's the blade there. So now, thanks to the chalk line, we're able to make pretty straight lines. With the help of the measuring gauge, I can pretty easily make parallel lines. So now if you want perpendicular, probably the simplest way that it might've been done is you just kind of eyeball it, get it as close as possible, brace it so it doesn't move or anything. And then you just do one side, flip it, and do it from the other side. That way, if it's off from 90 degrees, you kind of take the average between the two and it should be pretty close to right angle. However, there's a few other possible ways to do it. Anyone who's taken algebra in like sixth grade or whatever, they will be familiar with the Pythagorean theory, Pythagor Pythagor Pythagoras. <laughs> Pythagoras theory of a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Simple math, you get a triangle with the right angle. Pythagoras came a lot later, so it's not entirely certain that they would have known that math. So another possible option they would have done is using concentric circles that will help you find a perpendicular. So let's do that and try and get a perpendicular line that I can then use to make a set square. So I have a kind of very crude compass. I'm gonna mark two spots. I want the line to go roughly right here. So I'm gonna do, do two overlapping ones. So try and do like right there and right there. Just enough room. Now we have the two circles where they intersect at the top and bottom straight through them should in theory be perpendicular. So let's get the chalk line and draw that line in. There we go. I would say that's pretty spot on. Next, to get some lumber and attempt to mill it into straight and square blocks to make the set square. Now to connect them, I'll use a mortise and tenon joint, a form of wood joinery that was actually found in some of the works in the Giza Pyramid Complex, and has been found to be used since at least 5000 BCE.
make a wood glue. I pulled out some of the leftover deer hide from the book I made a few years ago. When it's fully boiled and dissolved, it makes a nice hide glue that was a common wood glue for many centuries through to today. I have the set squared all glued up and I can use the markings I made before with my geometry to confirm that it should be square. Next up, I'm gonna turn this into a plumb bob that will measure levelness. The plumb bob gets its name from the Latin word for lead, plumbum, as that's the material they were first made of, but I'm gonna use bronze. The plumb bob is also where you get terms like plumb, meaning straight and vertically level. So first I cast this guy, this is Bob. He's just a basically a pointed weight. It's gonna be added onto this and we're gonna tie it to a string and that will give us a vertical level. The challenge then is to go from vertical to horizontal, which is why we needed a right angle. I went through and measured the center point to drill the hole for the plumb bob, put the hole in there and the string. And then I can also find center here. And then I can use this to find a vertically level edge and a horizontally level edge. And then if you want to use it this way to find if a surface is level, I measured out the two edges from here, using a piece of string, marked them the same, and then drew a line across and sawed them. And then I can hang the weight here and put a mark wherever perfect level is and use it as gauge. Spot on, that's level. And also allows us to uh, do some math if we wanted to figure out different degrees. So if we are building, say, a pyramid and want to add a certain angle, you can get that marked and then have a consistent gauge for every slope. All right, so I have my completed plumb bob here and it's all calibrated and should be able to show both vertical and horizontal level. Yeah, so this is kind of the standard tool up until at least 17th century. And even today it has some use for a variety of different things for surveying and such. Basically a tool set the Egyptians would have had. So I'm gonna put these to the test and see if I can measure out accurately the dimensions of one average block for the pyramid. So I'm gonna introduce a unit of measurement called the cubit, which was a standard measurement used for the Egyptians, the royal cubit, which was a specific length, middle finger to elbow. This is my own personal cubit. I'm gonna use it as a reference. And the average block was, they tended to vary a lot, but I'm gonna do about two and a half by two and a half cubit, and then one and a half tall. See how well it all stacks up. And uh, double check it with some modern tools and see how close I can get it. See if I can finally experience true level. Give it two half. One, two. Cool. I think that's good. There we go. All right, so we have the kind of reference marks now. If we were to carve a brick, we have a Theoretically perfect square on the floor of two and a half by two and a half cubit. Then we have the one and a half cubit mark here that is theoretically level. So here's a projection with our fancy technology of what that block would look like. This would be uh, several tons of limestone. Let's just measure it up using some modern tools and see how close I got using these ancient tools. My suspicion is that these can be pretty accurate, but uh, I haven't been able to calibrate them perfectly. So I'll see how close I got it. This is the one I didn't measure. That one shows some inaccuracies there. I'd say the three I measured turned out pretty good. It's the one I didn't. It's a little off. The carpentry trick to make sure you have something perfectly square is to measure the diagonals. And if they're equal, then it should be a perfect square. So we're about 72 and a quarter, 73 inches. So we're a little askew. All right, I got the laser level to really put it to the test. And you can tell. It's a little bit of an accuracy there. So overall, it wasn't the most accurate in my results. And uh, part of that is just a refinement of these tools themselves. They're still not perfectly straight. Learning how to use them, their sensitivities a little bit better would probably help too. And I imagine also when they were using these tools, they would often use multiple methods to double check and confirm it. When they make a square, they weren't just gonna measure three angles and hope the fourth lines up. They would measure that and probably also measure the diagonals. They're close, but not accurate. The surprising thing about this is just how difficult it was to get to kind of the starting point 
point of milled wood and getting wood that's actually square. A tool like this will definitely be useful in the future for especially milling larger logs and such to be able to know if it's perfectly square. And speaking of useful tools, unit of measurements. We talked about the cubit. It's uh, kind of a standard in this era. A lot of different civilizations had their own version of it. And my own civilization, I'm building from scratch. So I'm gonna invent my own standard units of measurement. I don't know if I'm gonna necessarily stick to the cubit and other standard forms. So if you have any suggestions of what the basis should be on my measurement, should they be human anatomy? Leave that in the comments. Then you might be wondering, when are you gonna build your pyramid? The theories of how exactly pyramids were built and how long it took, most commonly believed is about 25,000 laborers over the course of roughly 20 years. So to do that myself, assuming I could move the stones and all the work myself, everything scaled, it would take uh, half a million years. So that'll be coming out in the year 50, 2020. So stay tuned for that. If I wanted to actually hire somebody to do it, uh, the most commonly held theory right now is it wasn't slavery necessarily, but agricultural workers in their off season were available and they were paid in bread and beer. And uh, so far I've already made bread. And next up, I'm gonna make my own beer. That's actually gonna be the next video. So stay tuned for that. Thanks for watching. Thanks again to Simply Safe for sponsoring us. Give it a try today at simplysafe.com forward slash how to make everything. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to subscribe and check out other content we have covering a wide variety of topics. Also, if you've enjoyed these series, consider supporting us on Patreon. We are largely a fan funded channel and depend on the support of our viewers in order to keep our series going. Thanks for watching.